Sickness is often, frequently healed by what we call his dunamis power. D U N A. I got stuff here. D U N A M A S. That's the same word place we get the word dynamo. Right. Okay. I have a scripture for that. Luke 6, 17 through 19. And he came down with them and stood at a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all of Judea and Jerusalem and from all the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits and they were healed, all healed. The, the standard is all. If you don't get all, you have to the standard, okay? And the whole multitude sought to touch him for power was, went out from him and healed them. Now, in the New King James, that says virtue. The word is virtue. But when you look it up in the concordance, it says dunamis, meaning power. So, God does this often, and you guys have all experienced that, okay? Now, the power, this power, this power, is sometimes present in kind of a different way. And, and I see this in Maria, she, she is a gift for healing more than I do, God, God's done that for her. And she senses times that he's ready to do, and I do this healing, and I'm kind of out in the dark. He's what? Yeah. You know? So different people have that capability, but with you there will be times when you sense his presence, and that's kind of a help. You need to be aware of that. So when that happens, you might want to be a little bit bolder than you would want. Okay. Now, when the healing is for all. Now, I've got some things to do. It's when you pray and you ask for that healing and it doesn't happen, what do you do? Number one, don't be looking in Mm -hmm. I don't have enough faith. This is not the time to do an inward journey. <laughs> an introspection. Get your eyes off of yourself and onto the person. So one, don't, and, and we do this. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, I'm, I'm speaking for myself. It doesn't work, you say, what's wrong with me? You're an intern. You're not the physician. Okay? You're his helper. You're learning. Okay? Two, relax, rejoice, and press into the Lord. You say, all right, Lord, just going to press into you a little bit more. Okay? And then three, thank God for what he's doing with thankfulness. And, and I have a secret for you. In order to give, you have to receive. You need to receive from the Lord. You need to receive what He has. And when you press it to the Lord, don't do it as a beggar. Do it as a bride. When, when Chris, Chris and I have been married 50 years now, she, she sees a pair of shoes or something she likes, she'd really like to have them. She doesn't say, oh, Wayne. She didn't come grovelling to me saying, Wayne, will you please give me two, $22.50 so I can yeah, right. buy these <laughs> shoes I want so bad. They've got to be sandals from K Kmart. <laughs> you can see where my wine my rocks are. If I can buy a pair of women's shoes for $22.50, they're all be blocking to me. You know? That was in 1890. <laughs> need and she doesn't she's not embarrassed she doesn't grovel and if I can do that I give that to her I don't begrudge her that <laughs> so this is just a side it has nothing to do in case you women don't understand men don't take hints 
and hoping that will speak to you. Sometimes you don't get the answer right away. And with God, two or three years isn't slow. Okay? That's right. I'm serious. I, there was one person that I prayed for and, and I had not a clue. And then about three or four years later I get this idea and I call them and that, that leads to some success and I, my first thought was, God, I could have used that two years ago. <laughs> but maybe I wasn't ready or something. But do not let the circumstance dictate your theology. Mm, good. Amen. You know what God can do. You know what He is. And that is the standard, and that's what you're working for. Yeah. You want to interview and experiment with other sources. You thank your person, affirm their faith, and then you commit to stand with them in their healing. You might say something, you know, I'm not giving up on this. I'm going to stand with you. Maybe we can pray in six weeks or you can come back next week and get more prayer. But I'm going to stand with you and be a breakthrough and maybe God will reveal us something. But don't be discouraged. I don't know, but I can send you the video. Later. Okay. A second way that he heals is by requiring you to deal with an external, an external wounding our unforgiveness. He, we see this frequently. Uh, for example, uh, there was a woman that had cancer for many years, had just not gotten any healing, and, and when they did some prodding and so forth, they her problem was not forgiving herself and holding on to that bitterness. The third way that requires different than just normal healing is curses are the demonic or the occult or false religions. Sometimes that God does not use the dunamis power to heal those issues. Uh, first of all, you and I have to know that we have the authority to break curses. Mm -hmm. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. You and I have the authority, you and I have the power to break the curses through the cross. Let me talk about authority and power. Uh, 
Satan is a bully. Uh, two short stories. When I was five years old, I didn't tell this last week, did I? No. I, I was born in Panama, and, and I had, uh, it was before we came to the States, and uh, I had a, a buddy that I used to go play with when I was about five, and when he got mad at me, I don't know, I'm just going to say it, he used to pee on me. You're a brother. He had a problem or two, didn't he? <laughs> and I would go running to my mother, oh, Johnny is peeing on me, and his mother would come and say, don't do that anymore, and my mother would say, do that. <laughs> Two weeks later, I get peed on me. <laughs> now, what I'm going to tell you, I'm not sure how spiritual or scriptural this is, I'm just telling you what happened. <laughs> my father got tired of hearing about this. So he used bribery. He said, Wayne, this is what I want you to do. The next time he pees on you, I don't want you to hit him on the yellow screen or anything else. I want you to just take a hold of his hair and not let go until I tell him. Not your mother, not his mother. Not his. When I tell you you can let go, if you do that, I'll give you three cookies. <laughs> Sure enough, a week later, Johnny keeps on me. I grab a hole. <laughs> Three and a half hours later. Oh, man. You guys hear from My dad's Joe. assistant harbor master in the canal zone. He's on a tugboat two and a half hours at sea. He comes home and he tells me, let go. Oh, man. Johnny never feels <laughs> I can't remember the address that that when we do not fear when we do not fear the enemy a demon it is proof to him of his perdition and for that's a twenty dollar word that means his consignment to hell so when you and I are faced with fear and we start to get fearful when we say I do not have to fear because I have the power of God with me it is proof that that demon is consigned to hell and you don't have to put up with it. Amen. Okay. So we have the authority. Another, another story on authority. I'm commanding officer of the USS Dolphin and we're coming in from from sea, and we're way out, pretty far off the San Diego Harbor, and there's a small boat out there. And the laws of the sea are, if you see someone in distress, you have to stop and help. So I tell the awesome deck driver, I don't see that guy's over there. It's too far out to be a normal boat. So we go over there, oh no, I'm just fishing, I'm fine. So we go on in, as we get a little closer, a Coast Guard cutter pulls alongside me. These guys have got bandoliers of guns. They've got their M14s. They've got a machine gun and his three-inch gun pointed at my ship. And he says, I want you to stop and let us board and search you. And I've got secret stuff on that ship that other people aren't supposed to know about. I don't want him to do that. And I said, I'm not going to let you do that. And he says, I'm going to fire a shot over your bow, and then I'll fire a shot at you. Whoa. Whoa. This is what I said. This is a United States naval warship. If you are an American, that is an act of unity. Mm -hmm. If you're not a, an American, that's an act of war. And you may have that gun that can fire a shot at me, but I got a torpedo that can fit the gun. So he decided to just escort me in. So I get in into port, and the whole world is waiting for me. The admiral, 14 captains, all kinds of people. And my boss comes aboard the commodore and says, Wayne, 
what's going on? I said, you tell me what's going on. I don't know. <laughs> and they said, well, did you rendezvous with a boat out there? And I said, rendezvous? I said, there was a small fishing boat that we went and checked to see if he was in trouble. He told us no, and then we came on in. And he said, oh, he was a drum runner that they've been following for 14 days. Lovely. And they're trying to figure out why a U.S. Navy ship is meeting with a drum runner. I said, do you need me to do anything? He said, no, I'll take care of it. So it just was But what I want to point out is when God gives you the authority, he gives you the power. Amen. All right. Curses, the meaning. I want to talk about word curses. Word curses do not normally stick. A curse without a cause cannot fall. So don't don't go sweating every time someone put, tries to put a curse on you. If the if the witches had that much power, we'd be out of business. <laughs> I'm serious. Don't sweat that. They're praying against us. They're praying all kinds of bad things. They don't have that much power and authority. So don't. Go crazy about it. But curses, uh, I'm persuaded that they don't just normally stick unless they're repeated over and over again. And primarily by a loved one, a family member, or someone in authority. Because it requires a, a it requires agreement on your part. Now you don't you don't just say, oh yes, I agree with you. What happens is they say it enough that you say, well, I guess that must be true. So when you come into agreement with that curse, it's not about healing you, it's about removing the effects of that curse. Okay? So sometimes sickness is associated with that. So you, just praying for the dunamis power doesn't do it because God wants you to bring that curse. So you have to examine other areas. And uh, three steps. One is you forgive the person that cursed you. And sometimes that's a parent, family member, the way they abused you, treated you, or that kind of thing. Uh, and they're, they're dead. They're gone. How do you forgive them? Forgiveness is in the eternal realm. Forgiveness may not affect them, but it will help you a lot. I want to give you a new definition for forgiveness. Not the only definition, but forgiveness is canceling a debt. Mm -hmm. That's one of the definitions. I come up and I stick a gun in your face, and I say, give me all your money. So you do. And so she gives me all her money, and then three years later, I get saved, I find the Lord, and so I'm going to make restitution to her. So I, depending on what scripture I, I read, I come back to five times or seven times or ten times the money. Okay? Pay back. And I say, please forgive me for taking this money from you and cancel the debt I owe. It's a valid debt. Okay? And she says, when? That's fine. I want you to fix some other things. I want you to fix the fear I have every time I hear that uh, anything sounds like a talking pistol. My heart just beats and races. I want you to also take care of the fact that my children did not have a place to live. They lived on the streets. They uh, have a lot of insecurity. I want you to fix that one. You know what? As much as I want to, I don't have the ability. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't have the ability to do that. And there's a scripture in Proverbs that says, do not seek recompense from your enemies. Look towards God. And when I first time I read that, I said, that's not fair. They owe me something. Do not seek, that's, re, that's a $40 word that means repayment for the people that hurt you. God says, don't do that. I said, I, they owe me. I should. And I said, why does he do that? And the simple reason, as long as she is looking at me to fix the problem, it will never get fixed. 
So when she forgives me, she cancels the debt. It's a valid debt. And now she can look to God to heal the broken parts. And he can do that. He has the ability. A couple of things here. How many people are never coming back to ask for forgiveness? Anybody besides me have a few of those people in their lives? Okay. Yeah. And so when you and I forgive someone and cancel that debt, it releases them and it releases God to fix us. That's why this forgiveness thing is important. And that's why unforgiveness is often a block to physical things you're having. Amen. You forgive them, and then you break the curse. And it's not rocket science. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you to sever, break, and cancel this curse that's been placed upon me. I come out of agreement with it. I break it off myself. If you don't say the prayer exactly right, you get fixed anyway. <laughs> you remember, the, remember last week when I prayed for the, for the guy in the motorcycle accident? I didn't say the prayer right, God. And all he did, needed was a vehicle. <laughs> don't get hung up on the... We, we are so nitpicky to say it exactly mm -hmm. this way. Yeah. Really? We make denominations out of it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And bless those who curse you. So, forgive, break the curse, and bless those who curse you. Three little steps, okay? Self-curses. Some of us don't even realize we do this. I am so stupid. You won't believe. It's a scary phrase. You tell, get ready to tell someone, you say, you won't believe. Well, yeah, I believe lots of things, but don't declare that they won't believe it, because maybe they won't. You curse yourself. You with me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm so stupid you wouldn't believe. So, self what, again, what you have to do is you have to break the curse you put on yourself. Let me tell you something. Uh, when we speak things, we, we know about sound traveling through the air. Okay? It's a good, good thing. You know, it also travels through our bones. Make a noise and, and put your hand on your cheek. You can feel it resonating. Bones are very good conductors mm -hmm. of sound. Let me tell you what is a great conductor of sound. Water. Because I live underwater in a submarine, and sound is what we use for everything. You make a sound, and it travels two and three hundred miles. You can detect something that far away. When we talk 80, uh, 65, 70 percent of our body is liquid water, the sound just resonates through our body. Wow. And that, and that curse just resonates to who we are. Okay, self curse. That was word curse, uh, curse is demonic, and so forth. I talked about a couple. Of, number four, sickness related to a demon, a spirit, or spiritual things, requires a different kind of power mm -hmm. than dunamis. And that power in the Bible is. <coughs> E X S O U S I A, exousia, and it means authority. It means authority. Sometimes Jesus prayed for the power of God to move. This. Other times he commanded the spirits to go. He commanded different things because it's a different kind of power. Remember last last week I I, I used the I said my iPad is my Bible. And, and I, I talked about that's a picture of God. Mm -hmm. And we tend to go to the picture of God instead of going to the source. Yes, you can go to the picture. It says this is how he heals, this is what's good to eat. But if that's not working, go to the, to the perfect source. You say, Jesus, tell me what I'm doing wrong. 
I tell a story. I, I don't know if it has to do with healing, but it talks about how God speaks to me. Chris and I went through a series where we were convinced that automobiles were sent to us by Satan. Oh, <laughs> yeah. we, we, had, we had all kinds of weird car problems. Drive along, all of a sudden, the oil pump drops, and, and I stop, the light comes on, and turns out the oil pump hadn't been functioning for six hours, and the light didn't work right, and so the engine yeah. burned up. You know, stuff like that. And I was convinced that God was trying to teach us something, show us something. And so, after about the tenth car, <laughs> this is what I did. I said, God, I think you're trying to teach me something. I'm not getting it. <laughs> what, whatever method you're, whatever you're trying to teach me in the car issue, I'm too dumb to understand. <laughs> Will you please use something different? <laughs> I don't care what it is, just use something else. Maybe the darkness is closed, or maybe something else. But use some other method to, to get this message. Because when I figure it out, I'll do it. To this day. I don't know what it was. <laughs> the cars the cars are not an issue with us. We've had great success with cars ever since then. And I'm guessing he taught me something, but I was wasn't even smart enough to connect it to the car issue. Okay. But go to the source. Go to go to him when it's not making sense to you. Okay. Sickness. Related to a demon, our spirit requires power. Sometimes we use the wrong power. I don't have time to teach you this, but there's a gal in our ministry, her name's Heather. No, I put on him. That about a year or two years ago, she came up to me and she said, Pastor Wayne, I think the fruit of the spirit are weapons of warfare. Love, joy, peace, weapons. Right. And I to, as I thought about that, as I mold on that, I am absolutely convinced she's correct. I don't think she's the first person to ever come up with that, but she's the first person to ever told me that. We use the wrong weapons sometimes. On my submarine, we have these things called torpedoes. Did I tell you this last week? And when I shoot an aircraft carrier, if I shoot a torpedo at an aircraft carrier, it's going down. Mm. One, I put two in, it's bang, going down fast. Yeah. I have a lot of problems though shooting down airplanes with torpedoes. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just don't want the waterfall. <laughs> See, there are effective prayers and ineffective prayers. There are well-intended prayers that may not be effective. So, you have fear. Fear is coming at you night and day. Oh, the opposite of fear is faith. I can use it with faith. It's not true. Perfect love casts out yes. fear. The enemy's weapons are fear, anger, hatred, violence, murder, bitterness. Those are none of God's characteristics. He does not use those to fight. He uses the opposite thing. So if you're dealing with fear, you say, God, fill me with your love. Mm, right. The fruit of the Spirit. And I had to make a, I got a little notebook I carried out. I made a list because I didn't have them memorized. And so when I'm dealing with something, I go down the list and says, does that one fit? Yeah, I think so. I got peace or joy, whatever it is. And I use that as the weapon. We, we come against the enemy with the weapons that are effective to take him down. Okay. We use the wrong power. We use the wrong direction. Dr. Jesus knows. He knows what to do in every situation. 
We are like the doctor who prescribes an aspirin for every situation. <laughs> you learn one method, you think that's what I'm that's the method. <laughs> the standard is all. An afflicting spirit is a particular type of demonic spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, this the symptom of this, the manifestation of this spirit is is if you have a pain that seems to move when you pray for it. Mm. Or it comes and goes. And uh, I have that. there are things uh, that have to do with uh, spirits of unclean thoughts in, in life. And, uh, and then there's specialty spirits, deaf and dumb spirits, and religious spirits and so forth. So my point is, God has lots of ways oh, yes, he can he the besides our, his doing his power. And you need to be aware of that. I'm going to quote some scriptures for, for you. Luke 13, 11 through 13. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, and he called to her and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. He didn't use the doom of his power. He loosed her from that infirmity. And he laid hands on her and immediately she was made straight. Mark 9, 25-20. When Jesus saw the people come, come running together, he rebuked the unspeak, clean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you to come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him, and then came out of him, and he became as one of the dead, so that many said he is dead, but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he rose. He didn't use the demon of his power. He had a different problem. Matthew 12, 22. Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute. And he healed him, so the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. There's a spirit in him. There's another spirit that we deal with frequently in our ministry called the spirit of trauma. Trauma is an event that Satan uses to keep fear in your life. And it turns out there's a physical brain, mind, body connection that's established in these traumas. But we've learned how to pray and break that connection and move on. Now, I'm telling you all of this because I think I have some exciting news. I got a call this last week from a man named George Runyon. He's out in East County, mm -hmm. pastor of a church. He's got some healing ministry. Right. I, I've known George for lots of years. I have to talked to him probably 15. And he and another pastor are gathering different healing ministries in San Diego, he listed off 12 of them, wow. Wow. to come together Whoa. to just yeah. talk about what we're doing and how we can work together. See, awesome. see, God. Let me tell you, we have a ministry that primarily deals with change of lifestyle. And every first thing you think when you're Californian that means Go lactose, uh, free lactose, free wheat, no sugar, right. you call it. Right. Go organic. Go red. Vegan. No gluten. <laughs> vegan. Okay. Yeah, I always said vegan. Now, now, now they changed the vegan. The change of lifestyle we're talking Correct, about both ways. is dealing with your bitterness, your anger, your hatred, sure. your unbelief, the traumas in your life. No. When you take care of those things, the spirits that have been affecting you in those era, areas go away and your body gets better. There's a yeah. ministry called Dumanus, Dumanus, uh, Bill and Carol do. We know them, lots of people that work in our ministry work. They have a different flavor, a different emphasis. They came out of the Bill Johnson stream. Okay? 
So they're they're going to be there's there's another guy. What's the guy that's got the healing room on Monday night? Uh, Bob Scott. Scott. Okay. He's a different flavor. Right he, sure. He's right and I'm wrong, yep. or he's wrong and I'm right. He knows and understands coming. things about gut healing and how God works that I don't begin to understand. So my encouragement to you is search out these strings. Don't reject them. Get, get what you can. And you're going to get some things from, from them that either we don't have or we don't know or what you need. And I, I see God doing some things in San Diego in spite of us. Amen. There's something getting ready to go on. And you can get 12 ministries like this in the same room that are not in competition. That's got to be a good Amen. Amen. I want to end with one sea story. Okay. And I want, to, I want to show you how God heals differently sometimes. I'm commanding officer of the USS Dolphin, 1981. We have just finished a real Buck Rogers experiment. Uh, communicating with a submarine underwater is hard. You, you can't use radio, because radio waves travel about that far. So, the reason you use sonar is it travels hundreds of miles. But, they're worried about when the bomb, the war starts, they want to get the message to the submarine real quick, launch our missiles, go to war with Russia, whatever we're going to do. And somebody came up with the idea, we could put a satellite up in the sky and use a laser light to shine there. Whoa. Now, the reason they decided to do that, somebody, like one of the scientists they were talking about, because light doesn't travel long ways in the water. If you go deep enough, it's dark, there's no light. But somebody said, you know, God put eyes on fish, so they must see something. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so they did a study, and, and the light color that fish see is this blue-green. Have you ever been to the beach at night and seen that bioluminescence, that oh, yeah. kind of that blue-green color? That light yeah. travels thousands of times further underwater than regular light because of the wavelength and the way it goes through water. So somebody said, we'll put a satellite in the sky, we can shine it in a spotlight, laser light. Now, the laser spot is two miles big in diameter, so it's a big spot. It's not that little thing that you see in the movies. You know. But we don't know how deep it can go. So what they did is they put one of these laser lights on a airplane at 50,000 feet. They put my submarine underwater with a receiver and they said, we're gonna shine the light down. You see how deep you can go and get the laser. And we, we it was phenomenally successful. Mm. We, we were able to copy this light as, at a depth nobody even conceived of. So that experiment's over and now the Navy wants to know about this blue-green color because uh, that bioluminescence is like static. The receiver can't tell the difference between the creatures and light. Mm. So we need to know about these creatures. And the Navy says, we don't know anything about these critters that glow in the dark. <laughs> Wayne, I want you to go collect them. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, always up to something. So we got to load these scientists on the submarine. We're going to go up the coast and gather these bugs. And we hit the worst storm I have ever been in in my whole Navy career. Oh, Lord. Now, I've been in the North Atlantic on a submarine in excess of 200 feet rolling 25, 30 degrees. Underwater. Whoa. It's off the coast. We, we had to go off the coast of San Francisco and the Seattle area because there's more of those green bugs up there than down here. <laughs> so we had to travel up there. And because there were some uh, not friendly submarines in the area, they wanted my submarine to stay on the surface so some other, my sister submarines could do some work against these guys, okay? So we have to stay on the surface and we are rolling back and forth and literally uh, really big rolls. People are exhausted. I have experienced sailors, 10, 15 years, that are very seasick. 